Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator and I've finished setting up this Samsung Q9FN. This is the 65 inch version and I've connected it to SkyQ in the UK. Now, if you are watching from the USA, pay attention that in the UK and Europe, we get a different stand design than the US, but I'm led to believe that the panel itself is the same between two continents. So just to let you know that I'm reviewing the same television as you guys are getting in America, just that the stand design is slightly different. So what I'm going to do now is to go through the picture settings in the user menu and explain some of them. So if we press the settings button on the remote control, you can see that the default picture mode is standard and you can change it to either dynamic, natural or movie. And if you hire a professional calibrator like myself to calibrate your television, or if you have access to the Kalman calibration software, you can also unlock two further modes, the Cal Night and Cal Day modes for day mode and night mode respectively. So what I will be doing is to go into the movie mode and explain the settings in there because most of the user controls are actually available in movie mode compared with let's say dynamic standard or natural mode where some of the settings will be locked out. So under the picture mode you can see picture size settings. This just let you set the aspect ratio of the content on screen. And then if we go into picture settings, backlight determines the light output of the television. So if you have a higher backlight, the screen brightness will increase, whereas if you have a lower backlight, the screen brightness will decrease. And it is critical to actually arrive at a suitable backlight setting for your viewing environment, because if you are watching in an environment in a room with brighter ambient light, then you will need higher light output from the TV screen to compensate. Otherwise, the whole picture will look too dark and the shadow detail will get lost. Likewise, in a really dim room, you don't really want your backlight to go too high. It will get quite uncomfortable to watch. And also, too high a backlight may exaggerate the backlight uniformity issues such as clouding and flash lighting in a dimly lit room. So it is critical to get the backlight setting correct and what us professional calibrators do is to usually assess the light conditions in your room, ask you how you would watch your TV with the lights on or off or with just bias lighting or during daytime and then we will use our meter to measure the screen and decide on the correct light output for a better viewing experience. So I'll set it back to the default of 20 in movie mode and brightness. Now traditionally the brightness control on other TV from other manufacturers control the digital black level in that if you actually raise the brightness too high it will just actually expose all the below black data whereas if you actually lower the brightness too much then you will lose shadow detail. But on the 2017 and 2018 Samsung televisions, including this Q9FN QLED, what Samsung has done with the brightness control is that they have actually designed this as a near black gamma adjustment. So by default, this TV and all 2017 and 2018 Samsung televisions, they clip blacker than black data. So if you actually increase the brightness control, what it will merely do is to brighten near black gamma, whereas if you actually darken, if you, if you actually decrease the brightness control, you will darken the near black gamma. I'll just set it back to zero, which is the default in movie mode, and we go to contrast. Now contrast decides the digital white level and the correct value is the one that lets you see some whiter than white detail because there's still some specular highlights even in SDR content. Sharpness is basically edge enhancement. Color basically boosts the color saturation and also luminance globally for all the colors. So if you want to target a specific color, 
let's say red, you shouldn't use this control because this control will affect red, green, and blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and all the colors in between. Tint basically rotates the secondary colors to adjust the hue. Apply picture settings, you can choose to implement whatever picture adjustments that you have made to all the sources. If you choose all sources here, I'll leave it on current source, which is not the default by the way, but I just wanted to reset this to demonstrate things for you. Digital Clean View is Samsung's noise reduction algorithm, and I think on the 2018 version, I've just briefly checked with the Samsung Q9FN, it actually performs some decontouring similar to the smooth gradation feature on Sony TVs and also the impact noise reduction on the 2018 LG OLEDs as well. So I'll be checking this out later on in my review. Auto Motion Plus settings, this is Samsung's motion compensated frame interpolation and also black frame insertion technologies. Now, the default, I'm not entirely sure what the default is, but it is set to custom with blur reduction set to 10 and jitter reduction set to 3. Now, blur reduction actually affects high frame rate content, let's say around 50 hertz or 60 hertz, whereas jitter reduction mainly affects the lower frame rate content, such as 24 hertz or 30 hertz. And depending on the content and the outcome you want to achieve, you will toggle this independently of each other. LED clear motion is Samsung's black frame insertion technology. If I actually switch it on, you can see that the screen will dim and maybe you can see some flicker from the camera. Now the flicker is going to be much more exaggerated by the camera because I'm using a different frame rate that is not in sync with the rate at which the black frames are being inserted. So I'll just switch it off. But when I do the review, I will be assessing the efficacy of black frame insertion on the Samsung Q9F and QLED television. Local dimming. Now, since 2017, again, Samsung doesn't really allow local dimming to be switched off. So there are three levels of low, standard, and high. And this Samsung Q9FN is a full array local dimming, or FALD, LED LCD. And presumably the different local dimming settings control how the individual zones will react to the different contents on screen in terms of their algorithm. I'll set it back to standard, which is the default. And contrast enhancer is dynamic contrast, Samsung's version of dynamic contrast. And there are two settings here, low and high. Generally, if you use this, what you will be getting is a punchier picture, but you will lose some shadow detail and highlight detail as well, because what the TV is doing is to apply a manipulated gamma curve to try and create a punchier picture, but you will sacrifice image fidelity, shadow detail and highlight detail as well. So I'll leave this off, and if I go into HDR plus mode, if I switch this on for SDR content, and this is an SDR content from SkyQ, it will be applying an SDR to HDR conversion, trying to create a HDR-like picture. And you can see that the image on screen has brightened up considerably and maybe may look blown out to the camera. So I'll switch it off. Generally, I don't apply HDR plus mode on SDR content, but there may be an argument for applying it in for HDR material because there are some rumors floating around that HDR plus mode actually engages Samsung's version of dynamic tool mapping, if it's even available, on the Q9FN, but I'll be doing some further testing to verify that. Film mode, it is disabled and gray out now, but that is because the SkyQ feed coming through to the television is progressive. It is 2160p. But if you feed a 1080i signal, any interlaced signal in fact, then film mode will be available for you to decide on how aggressive the film mode detection is on this television. 
color tone, this is Samsung's nomenclature for grayscale or color temperature preset. And there are various presets here, ranging from warm to warm one, standard to cool. And with each step up, you'll just get a bluer color temperature. I'll go back to warm to, which is the default in movie mode. White balance allows professional calibrators like myself to calibrate the grayscale to achieve the same standard that is used within the film and broadcast industry. Now the film and broadcast industry uses a white point or D65. So if let's say you calibrate this TV using these white balance controls, then what you will be doing is to try and align your TV to what the colorists actually see on their broadcast monitor. And so you'll be getting the most authentic viewing experience. Now under Samsung's white balance controls, there are the two point system and I'll explain this in the first instance. There are six controls here. R gain stands for red gain, green gain, blue gain, red offset, green offset, blue offset. The gain controls affect the brighter portion of the image predominantly, whereas the offset controls affect the darker portion of the picture in terms of the grayscale adjustment. Now, if we go out from here, Samsung has also provided us with 20 point white balance controls, which professional calibrators like myself can use to individually calibrate every single 5% interval ranging from 5% all the way to 100%. Now, the thing with Samsung's 2017 and 2018 televisions is that local dimming cannot be switched off. And when you summon the menu on screen, it will inevitably affect the readings from the meter. So the best solution is actually by calibrating this television using portrait displays, Kalman software. They have been partnering with Samsung to provide direct display control and also auto calibration functionality. What this does is that if I, let's say, use Kalman to calibrate this TV with the appropriate software, Kalman Ultimate, maybe the latest version, and with the correct cables, then I will be able to make the adjustments directly from my laptop without having to access and summon this user menu. So that way, the readings on screen will be consistent and won't be affected by the menus or slider bars appearing on screen. Right, so if we get out from here, then the next menu item is Gamma. Gamma is how the incoming video signal should be translated to the picture on screen in terms of how bright or how dark every element should be. And the default for SDR is BT186. I don't think you can change this. You can see that ST2084 and HLG are both grayed out because these are the PQ HDR10 standard and HLG is the broadcast friendly standard. But we're in standard dynamic range now, so it is fixed to BT186. And within the gamma slider, you can either brighten the picture even further by increasing the gamma value or darken the picture by lowering the gamma value. And right. If we go into RGB only mode, this allows us to toggle each color filter on and off to check the color decoding of your television. So if you actually switch on red, you can see that only the red channel is active, green, green channel is active, and blue, blue channel is active. This allows us to assess this, the color decoding of the television. But what professional calibrators like myself generally do is to just rely on our meter without actually needing to even resort to this function. Color space settings. Auto is generally the best if you don't have equipment to calibrate the television because what the TV will do is to read the incoming info frame and apply the correct color gamut. So BT709 for SDR and BT2020 for HDR. Native just basically fix the color gamut to the widest possible that this TV is capable of, whereas custom 
allows professional calibrators to adjust each individual colors here. There are six colors for us to actually adjust the three primary colors of red, green and blue and the three secondary colors of yellow, cyan and magenta. And under each color, you can calibrate the RGB mix to achieve more accurate colors. And those are the picture settings in the user menu. Also important are some options here in the general submenu and under external device manager, if you go into it, game mode settings are important for gamers out there who prefer a lower input lag for better gaming responsiveness when playing video games. Now, if you select it, you can either choose to turn it on or new for 2018, there's also an auto option. I don't know whether you can see the faint gray characters from the camera, but what this auto setting does is to allow this TV to communicate with a source device that has ALLM or auto low latency mode switching such as the Xbox One X, which I believe have received a firmware update to enable this feature. So whenever you hook up the Xbox One X to the television and you play a game, then the TV will automatically switch into game mode without you having to press any button, which is an extremely useful feature because otherwise you have to navigate through the user menu to switch game mode on and off as required. Now, Let's switch game mode on. I think because the game mode now is too bright, the picture may look blown out on the camera, but I hope you can still read some of the wordings here. If we go into Game Motion Plus settings, again, this is a feature that is new for 2018. What Samsung has done is to allow gamers to enable motion compensated frame interpolation even in game mode without actually significantly increasing input lag. And if you switch it on, you can see that you can access the blur reduction and jitter reduction function. And you can even turn on BFI, I believe. Okay. And so the whole point of this is to allow gamers to access higher motion clarity while retaining a responsive gaming experience. But I'll be testing this feature out with some of the games that I have to check its results. Right, let's switch game mode off because this is hurting my eyes. And HDMI UHD color, this basically ask if I actually go into the menu, this allows you to set whether the HDMI ports on your Samsung TV on the One Connect box can do HDMI 2.0B or fall back to 1.4 with older legacy sources. Now, I think on this TV, the TV will recognize UHD content and switch it on automatically and a message will come up prompting you, telling you that it has actually done that. So I don't think you need to access this menu that much unless you're not really getting a picture on screen, in which case you probably need to toggle this on and off. Okay, so that concludes my explanation of the picture settings on the Samsung 65-inch Q9FN QLED LED LCD television. I'll be spending the next couple of weeks testing this television. So if you have any questions about this TV, or if there's anything in particular that you want us to check, please leave a comment in the YouTube section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.